Hello, everyone. Sorry, you can't really see me with this window behind me. All right, so um, today is a pretty laid-back call. I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna review what you're doing this week for your assignments, and then I will hang out and answer any questions that you have. And other than that, we're um, there's nothing really crazy going on this week. Um, so this morning I updated everything for your week eight information. So things that you're gonna find on the website right now. Um, one, I'm asking, there's a, <laughs> excuse me, a worksheet for all of you to download, and it's really just a progress check-in, um, to see if you're actually where you're supposed to be with your concentration. So there's pretty, three pretty simple questions that you're going to ask, or you're going to answer. You're going to pull up the schedule that you created for your concentration, and the first question is just, are you on track? Are you not on track? Um, if you're on track, you have less work to do. So if you're on track, you're just going to go ahead and say yes. Um, and the second question, if you're not on track, I'm asking you to add in dates, update your schedule, because like I said before, the end date is not moving um, to make it so that you can actually catch up and get on track. And then the third question is for all of you to reflect on is asking, because um, some of you have already turned in several concentration pieces, which is awesome. So it's asking perhaps, have you turned in a concentration piece that after getting feedback and you thought it was finished, you're thinking, you know what, maybe it's not finished. There might be, I might want to go back and rework it. And if the answer is yes, kind of looking at your schedule and thinking about when would be a good time for you to rework it. Um, and just kind of jotting some notes down in the, there for yourself so that you actually remember that you are going to rework a piece and it doesn't come to like the day before it's all due and you realize, oh no, I was going to kind of update two of them and I completely forgot. So it's really just a check-in for you and for me to make sure that you're on track and if you're not on track to adjust. So before I go on, does anybody have any questions, concerns about that? And you can either no. talk or type in the chat box, and I can answer that way. Uh, no, I had no other questions. All right. Okay. I don't have any questions okay. either. Great. Um, then the other thing that you're going to see that's up right now, it's um, a two-part video. Simply, hi, Kaylee. Um, I'm just kind of going over your assignments for the week and what's up on the site. So the other thing you're going to see on the site right now, um, it's a two-part video. It's it's solely two parts because the system I upload your videos on wouldn't let me upload it at one thing as one thing. Um, so what I've been doing, and you're kind of going to get uh, over the next couple weeks, is I've been reaching out to artists that are working artists and that potentially work in um, different mediums than I do myself and doing just like a little mini interview with them, finding out a little bit about their backgrounds, about their work, how they get started, and then they're actually doing a demonstration for you. So they're showing you their technique and a little bit of, of how they work because uh, one of the wonderful and kind of challenging things of art at the same time is there are so many different ways that you can go about making a beautiful finished piece. So I thought this would be kind of a fun way to do it so that um, you're getting my perspective a lot that I will be doing videos for you as well. Um, and you're getting feedback from me all the time on your work, but this way you're also hearing from people that are working as artists and getting to see them work. So this first one is from a painter and she's going through the very beginning steps of her process and um, when she finishes the painting she's going to send photos so that you can actually see the finished product. But you're seeing like the first couple steps of her piece. Uh, you're welcome to, there's kind of a while where she's just um, painting so I did make it speed it up a little bit. You can skip through some if you want to. Um, but it should kind of give you a different feel of starting, setting up your canvas, and some new things to think about. 
Um, so along those lines, uh, for the most part, I am pretty much willing to reach out to any artist. I can never guarantee that they'll actually answer me or that they'll be willing to do an interview with me. However, um, most of the time, the only reason people even say no is because they're really busy and sometimes I can convince them to do it later. So if there's an artist that you totally love, obviously they have to be alive. Um, hi, Addie. So if there's... Hello, sorry I'm late. We were delivering eggs. No. <laughs> um, so if there's an artist that you love their work and you would love to know more about how they actually work, what their process is, um, and they're alive, send me their name. Um, I can't make any promises that I'll be able to convince them to talk to me and do a video for you, uh, but I will at least give it a try. So I will at least reach out to them and see if I can convince them to do it, which I'm normally pretty good at. So we'll give that a try. Um, and then the last thing, which is not up yet, but will go up later this week, there were a couple people that requested some more information on um, vanishing points and draw, like drawing with perspective. So I'm actually going to I'm going to do a video for you on that where I'm like drawing on my big whiteboard and going over that. So those are the two new videos that are going to come out this week. And some of you responded last week of, you know, some more tutorials and techniques and things that you wanted me to go over. So I have that in a list and I'm just going to kind of keep going through that list and creating videos at any time. If there's something you think of you, you can email me and I will try and fit that in. So basically what we're doing through the rest of the time that you're working on your concentration is I'm gonna be bringing in other artists that you're gonna hear from them, um, and then I'm gonna be doing videos for you based on your request, and there might be some like mini assignments along with it, but the main thing is gonna be focusing on making your concentration absolutely beautiful. Are there any um, questions about all of that? Do any of you have artists in mind that you want me to convince? Yes. Oh, all right. I, I can send you her name if you'd like. I would love that. Yes. And what kind of artwork does she do? She does kind of stylized portraits. Here, wait one sec. Let me get her name. Okay. Okay, I'm going to send it to you. There you go. Awesome. She's, I really like your style. All right, I'll see what I can do. Did any of you watch okay. the video that I put up yet today? Looks like a no. No, I haven't. That, that's okay. Um, so tonight when I get off this call with you, um, a bunch of you have sent me finished pieces as well as pieces in progress. So I'm going to do the video critique of that, and um, that will probably go up tonight. If not, it will be up tomorrow morning. And um, any finished pieces, I will go through and do the rubrics and get them emailed out to you. So that's kind of my focus tonight. So. Um, if you've been waiting for that information, it is coming your way. So those of you that turned it in a little bit early, thank you for your patience. Um, I was doing a craft show this weekend, so I was standing out in the freezing cold. It wasn't the greatest weekend for a craft show weather-wise, but, uh, so I wasn't on the computer very much. So today I've just been, um, doing AP work like a mad woman. Hi, RJ. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Awesome. So, um, like I said, today is really, I was I wanted to go over those couple things with you, and then I'm here to answer any questions that you want me to answer. Otherwise, today, we don't have a lot of new content or anything that we need to cover, um, but I will hang out and chat if you want me to. If you don't want to, you are 
Welcome to go. I see we have a cat hanging out with us today. <laughs> Mine doesn't <laughs> like. She doesn't like to sit on my lap. She only comes when I haven't fed her. Oh, she's leaving us. No. <laughs> the cat is leaving. So any questions or you're all just spectacular? Well, I am, for my concentration, I'm wondering about the colors for a couple of my lines. Mm -hmm. And one is, wait one second, let me grab my phone. So the one I'm wondering about is, and never stops at all, which is the last line of the first stanza. So I'm wondering what colors do you think would show never stopping. <laughs> well, before I answer that, I'm going to open it up to your classmates. So what do you guys think of when you think of something that's never stopping? What color comes to mind? Honestly, for me, I think, um, I'm not sure if this is going to make too much sense, but just the first color that comes to my head are like um, red, like red. Yes. And like orange and yellow, like the colors of fire, you know. Yeah. Okay. That seemed pretty cool. Any other color thoughts? I would say um, the same colors that RJ said are what I think of because when I think of something that never stops, I'm thinking of um, energy and yeah. or like electricity, and we tend to think of like really warm colors as having a lot of a lot of energy to them, or even sort of thinking of like a pulse and the heartbeat, which we would think of, we would associate the color red with that too, so. Okay. I think, I think Thank you. Sure. Awesome. Any other lines? You said you had a couple lines. Well, um, it asks a crumb of me is also a bit of an obscure line. What it's the last mean? line. So the poem, the last stanza is, I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea and never in extremity. It asks a crumb of me. Is a crumb a sea creature? Look up Sorry? Up. What is a crumb of me? Should I know that? It's um, referring to the thing with feathers, hope. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then I would think about what, what color does hope look like to you? I kind of think of blue and yellow as I put on my concentration for the first line. And so part of what you're going to have to kind of play with is thinking of the lines and their meaning and what colors work with that. And then at the same time as you're putting the colors on the paper, how are those colors actually working when they're all coming Gather and when they're interacting with each other and then you might have to kind of like push or pull some in slightly different ways like instead of being blue you might want to do more of a um, like purple or yes. red blue since you're bringing in the red from the energy just so yes. that you're not getting everything for the most part um, we don't tend to like colors that are, are kind of like straight out of the tube we like them to be mixed a little bit um, or if when you watch the video of the painter that I posted today, so um, her whole thing is really about layering paint. And so if her end color painting, she thinks it's going to be red, her actually base color that she puts down first is green. So she's always, her base color is the complements of what her finished color is going to be, which creates this really beautiful kind of vibration and depth. So some of that you could also be playing with and how are you laying, layering the colors on top of each other, which will help to tie them together. Okay. And you were doing, Thanks. which I'm going to show the rest of the class, not at this exact moment, but in the video um, that I'm recording tonight, some really fun um, experiments. Like that feather that you were printing is beautiful. Thank you. Our chickens are very happy to provide them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So Addie's been doing some like prints with with feathers, and I was getting really excited this morning when I was looking at them. They came out really cool. So I will share that with you all later. Cool. Um, so I think uh, you were doing a lot of a lot of layering already, Addie. So thinking, yes. um, you know, really how maybe how those colors go on top of each other. So even if the end color. Colors. Um, what colors could you put underneath it to have them all kind of connecting? And I even think of hope as being um, like very deep and very layered because we have hope because we're not there yet, but we can kind of see it. So the layers can help to show, you know, we're hoping that we're going to get through all these other colors and get to this like beautiful end color. Thank you. Mm hmm. Any other questions about um, your work? So like Addie did, which was perfect. If you're kind of stuck on something and you want like feedback and brainstorms right this second, we can do it. I'm just kind of a general question. Um, I was wondering like, what are some good methods for color that like to add color to work? Um, is there a certain, I know that you're working a lot with Photoshop. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Photoshop is not, as far as art making, is not at all my, like, area of expertise. I actually, I despise making art on the computer. I avoid it like the plague. So I oh. actually, um, I've emailed a couple people, and I'm waiting to hear back of people that do use Photoshop a lot to see if I can um, get them to do a couple lessons for you on Photoshop that would be much more beneficial. I might be entertaining to watch. Uh, try and draw on Photoshop, uh, but probably not super helpful. Um, so a lot of a lot of color, which I think the the painting video will really help you today. Um, when we're making art, is about layering and not about just going straight to the to the color that we want or straight to the one color that you have. So one way to do that, and probably the the easiest way to approach it, because there's already kind of a clear formula for that, is having, uh, doing a sketch, then having, bringing in a base color, and having your base color actually be the complement of what you want your end color to be, and then layering in um, your final color, and then kind of bringing shades into that. Um, it's so it's really all about working in layers and not just like I want to make a blue pony and so going straight to the blue. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking of a pony, but hey, because <laughs> uh, then that tends to make it look very flat. So which isn't always bad. Uh, you'll definitely see artists that do very very flat work, um, but when you're trying to get more depth and dimension in it a lot of that comes through layering colors on top of each other instead of going straight to it. So what I would say to start off um, is watch the painter that's in, in this week's video and then play with that concept of thinking, I want my end colors to be this, looking at what the complementary colors are that, and kind of doing a base layer and seeing how that works for you. That's kind of the most formulaic approach to putting color down, which is an easier place to start. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can play with that on Photoshop. So if you kind of want to see how layered colors work together, you can do, um, you know, do your drawing and then keep adding new layers onto Photoshop and adjusting the transparency, so adjusting the opacity. So you can kind of see the colors through each other a little bit. It would also be a way that you could play with it on Photoshop. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I do a lot of my coloring through Photoshop, so that, that's very helpful. Yeah. See, I do know that much about Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have one question. Uh -huh. I have one question for my um, artworks. Because, um, okay, from five and six, we've been um, I've been doing experimenting, and I was wondering what the degree of experimentation should be for the portfolio. That's an awesome and super challenging question. <laughs> um, 
I unfortunately don't have like a probably totally solid answer, and that's where things get a little complicated with this. Um, so part of it, I mean, we all always struggle to be making this like new thing that just no one's ever seen before, which is super challenging because maybe yes. you've seen it before, but <laughs> somebody else has seen it before. So, I mean, that's one kind of step in looking at it and thinking, like, am I am I just looking at something and recreating it, or am I pulling things from different things that I've seen and kind of bringing my own take on it? Um, I mean, everyone that's looking at the work is understanding that you're high school students. Um, and so part of it is, work is really looking at are you pushing your work can we see that you're trying new things um, that you're not kind of like, look I really know how to paint a tree like a pro and so I just keep on painting trees um, and the other thing that I would say which is why I shared a lot of portfolios because this is the type of thing that's really hard to explain, is looking at some of those that that scored high, a lot of it is kind of pushing the boundaries for how the medium's supposed to be used. Um, I mean, just as we've been talking about color, so part of that they would be looking for, like, how are you laying your layering your colors? How are you working with your colors? Are you only ever working with complementary colors or are you only ever doing analogous colors or every once in a while you kind of like surprising us and trying to throw something new in there um, is a lot of what they're looking for is am I being helpful? Can I help because um, I was um, confused about how I would experiment put new mediums. I already made two concentration pieces that look very similar in medium use. One is in um, color pencil and is in water, water pencil, water color pencils, and they look similar. And I was thinking I would put newspaper behind the monster and for the second piece, just to add a new experimental piece and show that I'm trying. But I don't want to make it too forced. Right. That's that's an Excellent, excellent point. Um, there totally has to be a balance between that because when when it's just like, oh, well, you did lots of experimentation, but it looks forced, then that's also not helpful. I would say right now from your work, you are well on your way to inventiveness. Um, your, like your, your images, there's definitely this imagination behind them, this depth behind them. So some of it is also like, what are you putting on the paper or are you doing the exact same composition every single time but just putting like different objects in the exact same places so it can be about medium but it can also be um, it can be about the size of your piece so you know one time did you do this piece that was like four by four inches and then were you like I'm just gonna go for it and you did like a four by four foot piece um, did you experiment? Maybe there's perspective in some of your pieces. Maybe there's distortion in some of your pieces. Maybe some pieces really lead the viewer into it, and other pieces um, were actually like your monster piece. We don't really go deep into it, but we're like staring right at the monster. So that's definitely a different kind of experience um, than your previous piece. So I think your um, you're kind of bringing it in in different ways. I think there's, you know, it's totally fine to add layers of newspaper or things like that, but definitely don't do it if it feels forced. If you're just like, oh, I need something new, so I'm going to like yes, put yes. this in here and, and like hope that that does something interesting. So if you're like, I really love these mediums. I love colored pencil. I love the watercolor pencil. Uh, then stick with that and just keep playing with how can I how can I do these different compositions? How can I do different perspectives? So even if you're not looking necessarily at like vanishing points, 
Um, so in one of the earlier lessons, I forget what week, we were looking at different perspectives of you can create a composition where we're kind of interacting with it, looking at it head on. You can do one where we, where the viewer actually feels like they're up above the piece looking down or where the oh, viewer yes. Yes. feels like yes. they're down below the piece looking up. So you're giving us all these different ideas in that way that would work for you as well. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. But I'm, I'm loving the monster. You and your brother are probably going to give me nightmares based on the work that you're sending to me. I mean, nightmares in as good possible ways that could actually come across because the work is beautiful. Um, but you guys have some crazy imaginations going on. Yes. In the best way possible. Crazy imagination is good. Any other questions, assistance needed? My cat's thinking about joining the call, but she's hanging out of me. And the dog is not allowed because she's too chatty. <laughs> Did you guys all have a fun weekend? Did anybody do anything exciting? Oh. <laughs> Oh, this is a sad group. Well, I finished Antoinette, my puppet. Oh, can we see it? Yes, let me go get her. Cool. Come here, fellow. Come here. But yeah, the weekend was good. What'd you do? I um, went to this, uh, some, some, we have some Indian friends and, um, I have some Indian friends, so I went to celebrate this Indian celebration called Diwali. Okay. Um, uh, what's that celebrating? It's like celebrating, like, it's basically a festival of lights and stuff, so that was pretty cool. Oh, awesome. And yeah, just like kind of chilled and did some art. Stand up. Here she is. <laughs> so she flaps her wings and turns her head, and then her head goes up and down, too. Whoa, that is really cool. <laughs> so she's going to fly, even though chickens don't fly. She's the amazing flying chicken. Wow, nice. And so do you have a puppet show that you're doing that you made her specifically for? Yes, it's the Leaf Puppetry Slam, the family-friendly puppetry slam, which is at Lake Eden's Arts Festival. And it's an amazing arts and music festival that we go to every year. Cool. How did she make the puppet? She's chicken wire. Wow. Oh, that, I, I see what you did there. It's a chicken, and you made it out of chicken wire. Yeah, she's going to be painted red, though. That's the only thing uh, I have. Yes. That is really cool. Very nice. Thank you. Any other fun things this weekend? Sorry, my computer was dying, so I was trying to plug it in, which... No, no one did anything fun. <laughs> well, we went to see Gilbert and Sullivan on Friday. What'd you go see? Gilbert and Sullivan, because we had Bio Lab in Pittsburgh, so we did went to a show. Oh, it was fun. fun! Fun. So I was in Philly all weekend with my husband, and. Um, did the craft show, which was good, except for it was it was very cold in Philadelphia, and it rains off and on on Friday and rains off and on on Saturday, which is never what you're really going for when you're doing a craft show outside. Uh, but that is always the risk of outdoor shows. Sunday was beautiful. Um, and we went out to eat every night. My husband's really into food, so uh, <laughs> he goes to restaurants all day. While I work on selling scarves, and then comes and picks me up to go out to dinner. Just so, he's just eating all day. <laughs> yeah, he's just eating all day. He just eats and runs around the city all day. So he definitely gets like the better end of the deal for the whole situation. <laughs> Have any yeah. of you ever been to a craft show? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Been to an art show, but not a craft show. Okay. So I don't if, know. 
It could be similar. Um, I mean, they kind of vary. The ones I do, uh, they're considered like fine craft shows, so you get you have to get juried into them, and you normally have to pay like four hundred dollars to do them. Hmm. Um, and so it's a bunch of people. Craft shows are kind of like. All of the people are like textile artists, jewelers, painters, photographers, potters. Those are probably the main things um, that all show up in the same place for a couple of days. That's how the leaf is, except there's music thrown in too. Oh, okay. Fun. That's cool. Yeah. One fun thing this weekend is I also started putting out um, Halloween decorations. Oh, yeah. I guess that is soon, huh? Yeah. Do you go trick or treating? Um. Yes. I usually like throw a party. Oh, okay. Very good. But yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, we usually have a day at school where everyone gets to dress up, which is normally a little bit of a mm -hmm. wild day. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always go so well when you tell teenagers they can put on a costume. Sometimes it's a little bit scary. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anything else you want to chat about? Those of you that jumped on late, um, when I post a video, just listen to the beginning. I kind of reviewed um, your assignment for this week, which isn't that hard. It's just kind of touching base on where you are in your concentration pieces. It should take like 10, 15 minutes, and the rest of the week you are working on your concentration. Check out the videos of the painter. I have a new video shortly of some more detail of drawing um, perspective. And he and I will post the class review of all of your work tonight or tomorrow morning. Cool. All right. Um, oh, I, do, I also want to just let you know that I do have a few things um, to turn in. I had a little bit of problem with my scanner, like it was in my home. I didn't know where it was, so. But I'll, I'll send that all to you by this evening. All right. So you found your scanner. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna do the. Let's see. What time is it now? Five thirty. Well, I'm gonna probably do. I'll hold off until like seven o'clock to do the video critique. So, um, if anybody has work that they want feedback on real fast, send it to me by seven o'clock, and I will make sure it. That sounds great. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye. 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 Have, a good, have a good week, everyone.